Hi guys, we're going to work on a few things today. Welcome to math lesson 1.4. So we're going to start today, just like every day, with some mental math. Let's see how much you remember. Number one, one and a half plus one and one half. One plus one is two. One half plus one half is a whole. So your answer should be three. One and a half plus one and a half. Four and one thirds plus four and one thirds. This should be super easy. If you said eight and two thirds, you are correct. And finally, the last one on this slide, six and one sixth plus six and one sixth. Six plus six is 12, one sixth plus one sixth is two sixths. Absolutely, let's go to the next slide, here we go. Let's try a little harder, uh-oh, it's getting tricky. Start with those whole numbers first. There's my hint. Four plus four plus four is 12. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is three fourths. So your answer should be 12 and 3 fourths. Next one. Ooh, a little trickier. Let's see what we have. 3 right, 3 plus 3 is 7. 1 fifth plus 2 fifths is 3 fifths. So 7 and 3 fifths. The reason why I'm not doing this work and showing you on a whiteboard is because this is mental math. This is stuff that you should be able to do in your head. We will be practicing this later on in this in this unit and next unit. So it's okay if you're not so quick with it, but we just need to make sure we're trying our best, okay? Okay, start with your whole numbers first. Two plus three plus one. What is that in your head? One eighth plus one eighth plus three eighths. What is that in your head? You should have said six and five eighths. All right, now it's gonna get even trickier. Third little section of the problem. Again, start with your whole numbers first. Two plus two plus two. It should be six. One third plus one third plus one third is three thirds. Hmm. Three thirds. So if I have a number that it's the same numerator as it is denominator, that's the same thing as one. So six plus one is seven. All right, three and four sevenths plus two and five sevenths. All right, three plus two. All right, four sevenths plus five sevenths. Uh oh. If you said five and nine sevenths, technically you're right. However, this is one you need to convert. The real answer is going to be six and two sevenths. We're gonna talk about renaming fractions again later on, I think it's in unit two. So if you don't understand how to do this just yet, it's okay, you will. So if you said five and nine sevenths, that would have been correct. All right, three and five eighths plus two and three eighths plus five and seven eighths. All right, start with your whole numbers. Got it. Five eighths plus three eighths plus seven eighths. Your answer should have been 10 and 15 eighths. Or if you reduce, it's gonna be 11 and seven eighths. Again, we're gonna talk about how to change these later in this in the semester, okay? So if you said 10 and 15 eighths, that would have been correct. Awesome job. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on uh, unit and lesson 1.4, okay? So lesson 1.4, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring my screen here so you can see. You can see my lesson and my paper right here. All right, so we're gonna talk through this. So what we did yesterday, um, is we talked about how if I have a piece of paper that is one foot long by one foot 
but I separate it into half foot sections. It looks like this, right? How many half foot sections are there in one foot by one foot piece of paper? One, two, three, four. The way you can remember this is look at that denominator. That means there are two pieces on this side and two pieces on this side, right? Agreed? That means that if I times two times two, that's how many sections will be in the square. That's gonna be a hint that you're gonna to use today. So in this picture, it says in lesson 1.3, you found that four squares with a side of one length, uh, with a side length of one half would fit into a one square foot, right? So how many squares with a side length of one third do you think would fit in one square foot? On your paper, so this is math, your math journal, page 10. Those of you that don't have your math workbook, you need to let me know as soon as possible. Some of you have not responded to that. So if you don't have it, make sure you let me know. If you do have it, it's on page 10. If you don't, I attached it. So you guys can print it out or do it on the screen or do it on paper, okay? So one option is I could draw, right? Yeah. I'm going to separate this into one-third foot sections. And I'm going to separate this way into one-third foot sections. So how many sections, how many little tiny squares are in that one big square? Nine. Now, this is easy because it's one-third of a foot. That is another reason why you can do this, okay? One-third of a foot sections. So that is a hint that will help you with this throughout the rest of the lessons, okay? Number two, Roger's shower is two and two-thirds of a foot wide and three foot long. He's going to cover the, flo the floor of the shower with square tiles that measures one-third of a foot on each side. How many tiles will Roger need to cover the shower floor? Use the picture to help you. Okay, the first thing I see is I see that it my, my math person that wrote this book for us is giving us a lot of hints. They put little lines for us to separate. So they're trying to help us out, right? Okay, so I am gonna use that to my advantage. I mean, why not draw the lines, right? So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna draw these lines. And it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Just as long as it's really close, you're fine. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to draw that. Now, am I going to sit here and count every single square? You don't want to hear me count from one to whatever. You don't want to do that. I promise. But I can find my length and my width. What I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video when I say, I want you to count how many squares you have across and how many squares you have going up. And I want you to find my length and my width. Go ahead and pause. All right, you should have paused and you should have found your answer. If I count my squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I have eight squares going across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine squares going up. Okay, so how many tiles will I need to cover the floor? How many of these little tiny tiles? How do I figure that out? If you said multiply, absolutely. I am going to multiply 9 times 8. So your answer should be 72 tiles. Okay. Now let's go to the second set. 
now, and I'm going to change my color so you can kind of see how I'm doing things, okay? Now, Roger's tiles, how many of Roger's tiles does it take to cover one square foot? Okay, one square foot. Well, I know three-thirds is one square foot. So if I were looking at this one square foot, how many tiles will I need? If you said nine, you are correct. Now use your answers to part A and B to find the area of Roger's shower floor in square feet. Uh-oh. I have 72 tiles, but I have nine tiles as one square foot. So how do I figure this out? All right, you should have thought about this, and I really, really, really hope that you said this set this way. If I have 72 tiles, and I know that nine is one square feet, I'm going to need to divide. 72 divided by nine equals what? If you said eight, your answer is correct. So what is a strategy that we use to find Roger's floor? We found how many total tiles it would take. We divided by nine tiles because that is one foot squared. That's what we did. We took the total number of tiles and we divided by how many it would take to make one foot. That's your strategy, okay? This strategy can be used for the entire rest of this page. So we're going to do number one of the next page together. So we're going to go to page 11 and we're going to use what we did on number two and three to help us out. And then you're going to do the other one as a check for understanding. Okay, I'm going to do a little small page, a little small form for you to fill out just to see what answers you got along with the math boxes for today. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is I'm going to give you a little bit of extra practice today. This is a hard concept. So I'm going to attach the home links which is homework, but I'm also going to attach the form that's like an extra practice page. That way, if you need extra practice, you'll have that to look at, okay? So looking at number one on page 11, here we go. Anna is covering the top of her jewelry box with glass tiles that are one half inch long and a half an inch wide. The top of her jewelry box is three and a half inches by two inches. All right, so again, our author gave us amazing little lines to help us out. So I'm literally connecting the lines from the top to the bottom, and then I'll connect the lines from the left to the right, all the way across and all the way down. Okay. How many tiles does she need to use to color the, cover the top of the box? So remember, in order to find that answer, I counted how many across and how many up. I have four tiles going up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles going across. So four times seven is what? Write your answer on that line. You should have wrote 28, 28 tiles. Now I need to figure out how many tiles does it take to cover one square inch? Okay, so this is a half an inch and this is a half an inch. That means I know that this is one hole. I'm gonna go back to the black marker so you can see this is one hole. 
This is a half an inch and this is a half an inch. That means this is one hole. So going one inch by one inch, how many pieces, how many tiles will it take to cover one square inch? If you said four, you are correct. Okay, so knowing that four tiles is the same as one square foot, now I need to figure out my answer. So use your answers to part A and B to find the answer of the, top, of the area of the top of the jewelry box. So again, I have 28 tiles. I need to separate them in groups of four. So my number sentence will be 28 divided by four. 28 divided by four. What is 28 divided by four? If you said seven, you are correct. So my answer is seven square inches. So that's what you're gonna do for the rest of this lesson. Again, I'm gonna have number two, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna send you a Google form that goes along with it and I want you to put your answers in there. Okay, great. As far as today, make sure that you have done extra math. Make sure you have done this Google form. Make sure you have done your math boxes for the day. Tomorrow is fun Friday. Tomorrow is a day where we get to play games. We get to do um, fun things with everyday math. I figured out how to get that taken care of today. So you guys should have access to that tomorrow. So you got to do that. You could do the prodigy. And then I'm going to have a couple other activities for you too that are going to be kind of fun. So in order to participate in those activities, you also need to make sure you're doing your work. Okay. So your job right now, make sure extra math is done. Make sure you have done the Google form that goes along with number two. Make sure you have done the Google form for math boxes. And then that is it for the day. Okay. We will be have question and answer sessions on um, today. So make sure that if you have questions, you jump on for my live. Again, looking at Google Classroom, if you look at that assignment that says meeting. If you are in Ms. Gilman's homeroom, you click that link at 930. If you are in Ms. Dodd's homeroom, you will click Ms. Dodd's room at 1030. And you, if you are in Ms. Martin's homeroom, you will click that link at 12. So make sure you jump on if you have any questions. Remember, I'm not a mind reader, so I don't know if you don't understand something. Okay? I look forward to seeing you guys during our Zooms, and you guys have a great day.